Hello class, in this video, we will be performing calculations involving the combustion of fuel. This video will cover the basics of stoichiometry, whereas the next video will cover more complex problems that involve limiting and excess reagents. Stoichiometry is a section in chemistry that involves relationships or ratios which allows us to find the number of moles, the mass, the volume reactants and products, as well as the heat generated during a combustion reaction. This is useful knowledge for chemists because it allows them to compare the amount of carbon dioxide emissions released by different fuels. In order to perform calculations in stoichiometry, a balanced chemical equation is required. When we have this ready, we can set up a ratio so that we can find the number of moles of an unknown substance, whether that is for the reactant or product. The ratio is normally set up in the following manner, where you've got the number of moles of the unknown as your numerator, divided by the number of moles of a known substance, and we equate this ratio to the ratio of the coefficients of the unknown and known chemicals from the balanced chemical equation. Let's have a look at a simple stoichiometric example. In this example, we want to find the number of moles of carbon dioxide generated when 24 moles of propane is burned completely in oxygen. With all stoichiometric problems, the first step would be to write a balanced chemical equation. We should be able to recall that complete combustion involves the production of carbon dioxide gas and water vapour. In this example, the balanced chemical equation for the combustion of propane should look like this. In this video, I will not explain how to write a balanced chemical equation as this is assumed prior knowledge. Furthermore, I would like to add that propane should be in the gaseous phase if you also refer to the VCAR data booklet assuming this was conducted at room temperature. From here, I can use stoichiometry to calculate the number of moles of carbon dioxide produced. To do this, I will set up the ratio where the unknown is on the numerator, whereas the number of moles of propane, which is my known, is on the denominator. From here, I will solve for the number of moles of carbon dioxide by multiplying the equation by the number of moles of propane. Substituting 24 into the equation should now give me an answer of 72 moles. I would now like you to have a go with a similar problem. Give yourself one minute to answer this question and resume this video again when you're ready to review your answer. To start off, we will begin by writing a balanced chemical equation for the combustion of butane. From here, we can set up a molar ratio to calculate the number of moles of carbon dioxide gas. We can see that the number of moles of carbon dioxide gas produced will be 4 times the number of moles of butane, which will give us an answer of 2 moles. In the next section of this video, I'm now going to go through different types of stoichiometric problems. We will now perform calculations involving mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry. As the name suggests, Mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry involves finding the mass of the products from the mass of the reactants. To do this, we find the number of moles of reactants, and then using mole ratios, we can find the number of moles of product, which can then be readily converted into mass using the formula mass equals moles multiplied by molar mass. All mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometric calculations will follow this process, which I highly recommend for you to remember. Let's go through an example. In this example, we want to calculate the mass of carbon dioxide gas produced in kilograms from 540 grams of propane which undergoes complete combustion. The equation for the complete combustion of propane should look like this. From here, we can calculate the number of moles of propane by dividing 540 with its molar mass giving me an answer of 12.3 moles. Using mole ratios, the number of moles of carbon dioxide should be 3 times that of the number of moles of propane which would therefore give me an answer of 36.8 moles. With this information, I can calculate the mass of carbon dioxide by multiplying the number of moles with its molar mass, giving me an answer of 1,620 grams. Because the question wants the mass of CO2 in terms of kilograms instead of grams, we need to divide our answer by 1,000, hence the mass of carbon dioxide produced is 1.62 kilograms. I would now like you to have a go with a similar problem. Pause the video now and give yourself 2 minutes to come up with a solution for this problem and then resume the video again when you're ready to evaluate your answer. Like all questions, we will start off by writing the chemical equation for the combustion of butane. We can then calculate the number of moles of butane by dividing its mass with its molar mass. However, keep in mind that mass needs to be expressed in grams, so I've multiplied 3.6 with 1000 which is how I got 3600 in my working out. Using a calculator, the amount of moles of butane should be equal to 62.07 moles. We can then set up the mole ratios to find the number of moles of carbon dioxide produced and then rearrange it. Hence, the amount of carbon dioxide should be 4 times the amount of butane, which gives us an answer of 248.3 moles. To convert moles into mass, we multiply the number of moles by the molar mass of carbon dioxide, 
giving us an answer of 10,924 grams. To express this amount in kilograms, we divide it by 1,000, giving us an answer of 10.9 kilograms, rounded to three significant figures. In the next section, we're going to be looking at calculations involving mass to volume stoichiometry. As the name suggests, we're going to find out what is the volume of the gas produced from the mass of the reactant. To do this, we will need to first find the moles using the formula moles equals to mass divided by the molar mass. We can then find the number of moles of product by performing mole ratios, which can then be converted to volume. The formula that we use to calculate the volume of gas produced will be dependent on the pressure and temperature. If the combustion reaction was conducted at STP or SLC, we could use the formula V equals moles multiplied by molar volume, where Vm is equal to 22.7 at STP and 24.8 at SLC. In contrast, we use the formula V equals to NRT over P under non-standard conditions. This equation is derived from the universal gas equation, but has been rearranged for your convenience to solve for V. Let's go through an example for each of these two scenarios. In the first example, we want to calculate the volume of carbon dioxide produced in litres when 2 kilos of propane is burned completely in oxygen. The question also mentions that this is tested under standard laboratory conditions. As usual, we start off the question by writing the balanced chemical equation for the combustion of propane. We can then calculate the number of moles of propane by dividing by its molar mass. Please note that I've already converted 2 kilos into grams in advance. From here, the molar ratio states that the number of moles of carbon dioxide produced should be 3 times the number of moles of propane reacting, which gives us an answer of 136 moles. Because the combustion is carried out under standard laboratory conditions, we're going to be using the formula V equals to N times Vm, where Vm equals to 24.8. Plugging in these values into the calculator should give us an answer equal to 3.38 times 10 to the power of 3 litres. In the second example, the combustion reaction is carried under non-standard conditions. I start off the problem by reusing the same chemical equation for the combustion of propane which I've used multiple times in this video. From here, we calculate the mass of propane by dividing 800 by the molar mass, giving me an answer of 18.2 moles. The number of moles of carbon dioxide produced should be 3 times the number of moles of propane, hence the number of moles of CO2 equals to 54.5 moles. To calculate the volume, we would need to use the gas equation and rearrange the sulfur V as shown over here. Substituting these values into the calculator gives us an answer equal to 755 litres. As you can see from these two examples, the only thing that's different is the type of formula used to calculate volume, which depends on the pressure and temperature stated in the question. I would now like you to have a crack at a similar question. Give yourself two minutes and then resume the video again when you're ready to compare your answer. We're going to start off the question by writing a complete combustion equation for butane. From here, we calculate the number of moles of butane where you should have obtained an answer equal to 86.2 moles. According to the molar ratio, the amount of carbon dioxide is 4 times that of butane, giving us an answer equal to 345 moles. Because combustion was carried out under non-standard conditions, we're going to be using the universal gas equation to solve for V. Please remember that we need to convert degrees Celsius to Kelvin by adding 273. Inserting these values into the calculator should give you an answer equal to 2.24 times 10 to the 3 litres. In the last section of this video, we will be looking at calculations involving volume to volume stoichiometry. In these problems, we need to calculate the volume of the product from the volume of gas. Volume to volume stoichiometry is based on Avogadro's law, which states that one mole of any gas has the same volume as one mole of any other gas at the same temperature and pressure. As a result, the volume ratios are the same as molar ratios. Let me demonstrate what I mean by this in the example down below. According to the combustion of methane, the moles of methane reacting compared to the number of moles of oxygen, carbon dioxide and water is in a 1 to 1 to ratio as stated by the balanced chemical equation. From this information, we can find the volume of each substance because the volume ratio equals the molar ratio. Let's say that I had 20 mils of methane. Hypothetically, this means that the volume of oxygen gas should be 2 times the amount of methane as stated in the mole ratios, which therefore equals to 40 mils. Hence, the volume of carbon dioxide should also equal to 20 mils because there's a 1 to 1 ratio with methane, and the volume of water should be 2 times the volume of methane. In another example, let's say that the volume of nitrogen gas was 30 mils. We can use the mole ratios to find the volume of hydrogen and ammonia. The volume of hydrogen gas should be 3 times more and the volume of ammonia should be 2 times more. Let's now look at a legitimate example. 
In this question, we want to calculate the volume of oxygen gas required given that there was 50 mL of methane. Notice in volume to volume stoichiometric problems, temperature and pressure conditions are constant and the typically do not provide the values. Since we know that mole ratios are equivalent to volume ratios, the volume of oxygen should be two times the volume of methane, hence the volume of oxygen gas should be equal to 100 mL. I would now like you to answer the exact same problem, but this time calculate the volume of carbon dioxide produced. Give yourself a minute and then resume the video again when you're ready to check your answer. In this question, the volume of carbon dioxide gas produced should be the same volume as methane because it's a 1 to 1 ratio. Hence, the volume of methane is also 50 mL. By now, you should be able to meet the success criteria in this video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys again in the next one. Bye.